Welcome to 44 on the Town. Entertainment news, what's trending, and much more. Hi, I'm Veronica. We're so glad you join us here on 44 on the Town. Later on, we're going to try to break some bad shopping habits with Tara in what's trending. Vanessa will tell us what's up now in the world of music. Plus, we have another edition of All Aboard TV with Carrie and Rob Stewart. But up first, it is time for Entertainment Now with TM Powell, it's sponsored by Emerald City Comics. And this was the final big weekend of the summer with Straight Outta Compton storming into theaters. But TM also has two other films to discuss before we review the rap biopic everyone is talking about. Yeah, it's a big film, but I want to focus on these two films first that are opening as well. One of them is the end of the tour. And the only reason I want to focus on this is because of Jason Siegel. This guy has a good, good shot of being nominated for supporting actor for this movie. Now, I've seen a couple of blurbs in the paper and on Twitter, but I'm not familiar with this movie. Uh, it's a story about a Rolling Stone writer that goes to visit with an author who's very famous, and Siegel just kind of morphs into this character, and he is great in it. He's got a good shot. It's all drama. No, okay. no comedy at all. This is a very serious role, but I think he's got a shot. But no one's going to go see it. It's hardly <laughs> opening anywhere. It's a big talky film. They talk and talk and talk. It's not very exciting, but it's more about, you know, the acting job from Siegel. That's what I think. The other one is The Man from Uncle. Now, we love spy films. Earlier this year, we loved The Kingsman, right? That was excellent. This is a fun one, too. Not on that level, but still a good time. Army Hammer, Henry Cavill, who plays Superman in the Man of Super Steel cute, movies. Yes. Yeah, and it takes place in the 60s. And I always say, if you're going to remake a television series, make one that people have forgotten about. You know, because if you make a beloved one, expectations are so high, right. you're never going to match it. But it's a slick spy thriller. Guy Ritchie directs it. I really thought it was a good time. But like I said, later on today, we're going to find out it didn't find an audience because the big monster of a film is straight out of Compton. And I knew the buzz was growing for this, big time, <laughs> because my country music DJ co-host over here contacted me after originally saying she didn't want to go and said, hey, I want to go to this. <laughs> well, you know, I, I saw, the, you know, they had the straight out of memes hitting Instagram and Huge. Facebook. I mean, it really, the buzz started building. And at first, I guess I really just underestimated the movie. I didn't realize how involved this biopic would be. And I really am glad that I went to go see it because I thought it was absolutely an excellent piece of film. Yeah, it honors their legacy. And they're the founding fathers of gangster rap. For better or for worse, they're the founding fathers. But it also gets into Death Row Records with Suge Knight. I mean, they do not paint Suge in a good light. And they, listen, Suge, I'm sorry. I don't want to say anything <laughs> bad about you. But they don't paint him a good light at all. The price of this film, it was only $29 million. You'll agree with me. This is a huge scale of a film. I mean, it's like you're in a concert film at times, and the time period that it goes across from, the range of it, and the cast. I mean, it's a big film hiding out in a small film. I have to give up to F. Gary Gray. He did a great job making this film feel big, and a lot of it has to do with the cast. They are fantastic, including O'Shea Jackson Jr., who is Ice Cube's son in real life. I know he had genetics working for him, <laughs> considering he was a son, but right. he is Ice Cube. I mean, you have to admit, he's freaking Ice Cube. He is excellent in this movie, and you know, he had a lot to prove taking this role because they didn't just hand it to him. It's not like he's Will Smith's kid who just gets roles because no. of his dad. I mean, he really had to, he had to try out hard for it. He had to prove to the producers that he was the right guy for this movie and he absolutely kills it. His mannerisms, the fire in his eyes, just how the slur of his speech, everything, it was Ice Cube. No offense to the other guys, they're great. Mitchell was great as EZ. I really do think he was good too because he's kind of the villain, you know, he kind of gets jealous at times, but he's also the heart by the end of the film. Right. I mean, it really is about the big three, Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, and Easy. It's about their travels. MC Ren and Yellow, they're a part of it, but they're kind of more there for comic relief or I think most back people up. refer to them as the other guys. Yeah, and it's the truth. They yeah. are the other guys. They weren't successful like the other ones were. I mean, Dr. Dre went on to make millions off of headphones. Right. I mean, but I really enjoyed just showing the legacy. And it's a story about freedom of speech. It's a story about a controversial group, but it's also a story about just some friends that wanted to have a better life. Even if you're not a fan of rap, you have to really appreciate and respect these artists that were living in dire situations, you know, in Compton, they're growing up, they're teenagers, everyone is selling drugs around them, and they decide to take their talents and try to make a better life for themselves. That is impressive right off the bat. Uh, and, and I love, the thing that I really love about this movie is how much detail they go into, into the story. Um, they give a lot of detail, but it, 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 I don't know, it's like this perfect balance too, because it doesn't feel like it's too much. It's funny. It can be serious. It's like a party movie at times. It's an inspirational movie. But I look at NWA as just, they were the rebel outlaws that I loved back then. I'll let you in on a little secret, Veronica. I'm white. But I loved NWA when I was growing up in suburbia. Everyone did because yes. they were another form of rebels that we hadn't seen before. And it was like a looking glass looking into their lives that might have well have been the wild, wild west to us living in suburbia. 
But we looked at it as like, man, what are these guys going through? It sounds crazy, but we almost admired them away, even though we wanted no part of their lives. No, and you know the thing is, is truly NWA was one of those groups that really socially they they expanded that that bubble like they brought people out of their little suburban bubble and said hey you know these are the real things that are happening and i think that they're relevant to this day because you talk about police brutality talk about racism i mean come on let's face it dr Dre's the chronic came out when i was a senior in high school i own that album i knew that album and I, I dare you to find like any white kid in suburbia who did it we loved it it crossed over that's what they want to do is cross over yeah i think that a lot of people will be able to watch this movie and actually identify with it. It brought us all together because we all loved NWA back in the day. It brought us all together. They were just, they were anti-establishment. They were, mm -hmm. but listen, it's a great film. I think it's the best film I've seen this year. Three and a half out of four stars. I hope it gets some attention at Oscar time. I don't know if it will, but just kudos to the whole cast, everyone involved for making just a great movie that honored the legacy of NWA. It was excellent, excellent, excellent. You can check out TM's review online at CW44.com and we'll be back with more 44 on the town. Entertainment Now with TM Powell, brought to you by Emerald City Comics. Emerald City Comics is celebrating the male side of DC bombshells. That's right, 20% off all male DC bombshell characters, including Batman, Superman, and Aquaman, this Saturday at Emerald City Comics. Comics, toys, games, artwork. Emerald City has everything a collector is looking for in a neat and organized atmosphere. Come see the pop culture explosion at the gigantic Emerald City Comics Superstore. They're open till 6 and Monday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. 